Hey guys, this is your Mac Basics. So whether you have a MacBook Pro or an iMac, this is it for you, okay? So first of all, let's go right into this. Now, down here below, you guys are gonna see your dock. Now, if you don't see it, just go down with your mouse and this might pop up. Now, usually as default, you guys will see it all the time, okay? I suggest, if especially you have a 13 inch and you need that screen to be this neat and just not having this in the way all the time, you guys can hide it like this. I'll show you that in a second. So first of all, let's just go right into your system preferences. So right here's our system preferences. Now you guys should see down here below. If you don't see it for some reason, let's go right up here for our spotlight search. So that's right up here on the right hand side and we're gonna see this. So let's just click on there and then you guys will see this and type in system preferences. So once you have typed that in, just open it up so right here, we're gonna do the first thing, which is right clicking. Now all Macs do have right clicking. You don't have to press the control and then do your left clicking in order to get that right clicking. You guys can do straight right clicking. I'm not sure why it's not a default for Mac, but this is how you set it up. So let's go right into mouse and here it is. So that's our secondary click. So make sure you have a check mark right there. And if you right click on your desktop, for example, you guys should see this. Okay, so if you right click on a folder on your Mac or something like that, you will see this, this, these options right here, and that's right clicking. Now, you do have more gestures, so I suggest going through those. I'm not going to show you every single one because you guys can just scroll through each one and see what each one does. I have them all activated. Also, your tracking speed. Your mouse might not be the fastest, so you might want it to be a little more sensitive. This is how you can adjust it, okay, just by dragging this from left to right, and there you go. So let's go to our second thing. Now let's say you guys have a MacBook and didn't purchase a mouse for it. So here's your trackpad. It's the exact same thing. So just click on your trackpad. Now I don't have my trackpad right now, but if you guys click on it, you guys will see the same options and uh, your right clicking is a little bit different. You just have to tap with both of your fingers on the trackpad and you guys will see that uh, left clicking, okay? I mean right clicking and you guys will see these options if you right click on your desktop for example So it's the first thing that you, all you Mac users should know and um, Even experienced Mac users still don't know that they can actually right click right away It's all in your system preferences. So right now that we're in system preferences I want to show you a couple things so from here we can change our desktop background So right now here's our default and you guys can choose any of your pictures or load up any picture that you want into your desktop Okay, so right here, I'm just gonna choose one of the standard ones. For example, if I choose this one, it changes right away. So that's how you guys can change your desktop. And I'm just gonna leave it as default, actually. I just wanna show you that, because a lot of people don't know. Screen saver, obviously, you guys should have it on at all times. I would actually suggest for most of you have it in five minutes, but it really all depends on your profession. Uh, some of you are just gonna be there and never leave your Mac, so might as well just leave at 20 minutes. Um, in my case, I actually don't have that on ever because I never leave my Mac. Uh, whenever I'm on my Mac, I just stay there or I turn off the screen. So if you have an iMac, you can still turn off the screen. If you have a MacBook Pro, same thing. So right here on Mission Control, I wanna show you that before we go anywhere else. On Mission Control, this is where we can set up some customization for your Mac. So Hot Corners, I wanna give you an introduction to Hot hot corners. So what do these do? Okay, I'm gonna zoom out for now just to demonstrate what these do. So for example, if I set up my hot, hot corner, um, for example, this one I have as desktop. So let's say if I go to this corner, the left hand side corner, and I put my mouse up there. Okay, so it's going up here. It just shows me my desktop. So if I have a lot of windows open, um, and if I go to my left side, it's gonna hide everything, okay? Uh, you can also make other stuff. Uh, for example, I have my right corner, okay, bottom corner, to put my display to sleep. So whenever I leave my computer, like I told you guys, I would actually put my display to sleep. That I won't do right now because it'll mess up my recording, but all I have to do is scroll all the way down here, okay? Go all the way down here, I mean, and go on my right corner. Once I touch it, my display will go to sleep. I won't do that right now and you can set up any corner that you want and you can also take off whatever you did for now uh, so for example dashboard if I make this corner the left hand side so let's go down here and it's gonna show me my left hand corner dashboard well actually let's do something else um, 
Uh, you can put start screensaver, for example, if you go to that corner and it's gonna start your screensaver, which I won't do that right now because it's also gonna mess up my recording. But let's say you guys wanna go back and take that off. You can always pick this and that's gonna take that off. You can click okay and that's it. You also have special keys that you can assign to your Mac. Let's go in a little bit more into that, but I do suggest getting into those and seeing what each one does. Your mission control, what that does actually is show you every window that you have open. Right now I don't have that many open. So I'm gonna attach my FN key on my keyboard and it's gonna show me this. Okay, so I don't know if you guys saw that change, but yeah, it's just showing me all the windows that I have open at the moment, which is only my which is only my uh, system preferences at the moment. So I'm just gonna touch that. So that's all I have right now for this special keys. So I do suggest going over those and seeing how cool those are. Now for your dock to make that bigger, smaller, or hide, this is where you want to go. So right now all I have is this. Okay. So what I like for myself is always to have hidden. So whenever I go down, then it appears. That's because I want to maximize my space on right here, my display. I don't want these things to be all the time here because I don't need them all the time there. Um, let's say I have something open. So I'm gonna open Safari, for example. That's gonna be your default thing. You don't have to use it. You can also download Google Chrome for it, Firefox, and you have other ones that you can download for free for Mac. So there's a lot of things that are for PC and that are compatible with Mac, okay? So you can download any of these, um, by the way. And now let's say I'm here in Safari. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm, my dock is hidden and I can't access my dock. So if I want to open another thing up, I can access it whenever I go down, okay? And then it's gonna appear. So that's what it means, okay? When I have that set up. Now I'm gonna go to my mission control. It shows me all this. Now let's go back here and um, on my dock, I can make that smaller, larger. Where well, you guys can play with these effects, I suggest always, always having it like me automatically hide. So that's this option down here. So right now you guys probably don't have a check mark and that's why it's always on. Now as soon as you put a check mark on it, it hides. Okay, and then you just have to go down and then it appears again. So I wanna show you guys that for sure it's a must know. And um, also energy saver. It's pretty cool for those of you who want to have your Mac on until a certain time, maybe you're downloading something you want to automatically uh, turn off, you can go to schedule and schedule it. For example, right here, if I click, um, I can schedule it for shutdown every day at 12 a.m., for example, and that way it's gonna cancel my downloads at that time, it's just gonna shut down. So I'm gonna take that off because I don't want it to shut down. And that's it, I can just press cancel or okay. It doesn't matter. And from here you have other choices as well uh, for your display and stuff like that. Now my display uh, to turn off, I usually have it after one hour. And that's again, because I turn it off myself so I don't really need that, Not that can get annoying for me. Um, a Safari, like I said, it's your default browser. So this is where you guys would go into Google and search your stuff. Um, I wouldn't, well some people like Safari, others don't, so you can always download other stuff such as Chrome and Firefox. Now if you want to download those, just Google it in Safari, Google Chrome, and that's it. Go right to the main web page from Chrome and it's going to show you the download that's available for your Mac. Now one of the other things I want to show you guys and go over with, and we're going to go over system preferences again. This is where most of your stuff will be, and I want you guys to see right here you guys are gonna have your iCloud so I want you guys to go into your iCloud and make sure you have that iCloud ID put in now you do get iMessage with your iCloud on your Mac and FaceTime so have that set up just go right into it and you guys can set it up it's with your email I'm sure most of you have it already if you started up your Mac if it's a used Mac you can also change it up um, and if you have a used Mac I, I would actually recommend restoring it and setting it up yourself However, you don't have to, you can just put in your Apple ID and that's it. Um, right here, your App Store, that's where you can set up other stuff, but I wouldn't do it right there. Um, if you guys want to update your Mac, so whenever there's updates for Mac, what you guys want to do, um, whether it's an app on your Mac, uh, any app for that matter, or your iTunes, for example, or even sometimes Google Chrome doesn't go under your updates there, but sometimes it does, so it depends. Most Macs, uh, most apps for Mac do go under there. So I'm gonna show you, you guys want to go into Finder. So we're gonna go up here. Um, 
on Finder and you guys will see right here the Apple logo. And if you start up your App Store, which is your third option, you guys will see the option to update. Okay, so right here is your updates. So that's where you guys want to go. When something's not working properly, you guys will probably have to update it. And this is where you guys are going to go and update your Mac pretty, well not pretty frequently, every three months maybe. Uh, depends when Apple comes up with a new update, but usually when something's not working properly, just make sure to update it and maybe it's going to get fixed. Anyways, something else that I do want to introduce you guys to in System Preferences, again, is your Time Machine. So Time Machine is pretty cool and it's actually really, really easy to set up. So for that, you need an external hard drive. So if you guys do have an external hard drive, I would suggest formatting it for Mac and using Time Machine. Time Machine is really cool. I have a separate video about that. It's a little bit more lengthy, but I would look into it. Um, I will leave my link down here below so you guys can see what Time Machine does. But it basically just um, makes a backup of your entire computer, of all your apps, all your information. So let's say your computer crashes for some reason, it's not starting up with Time Machine. You can actually press Command R on your machine when it's not turning on and um, then you can restore everything that you had, okay? So Time Machine, for example, my last um, backup was done on the 24th. So let's say my computer crashed today. I can always go into Time Machine and go back in time into December 24th. So whatever files I had that at that time created and everything will go back on my Mac. So that's why Time Machine is really, really cool. I will look into it. Um, I'll show you guys a little bit more later on how to uh, format your external hard drives and everything in order for them to work properly with Mac. Now Mac does read any type of USB so any USB that's compatible with your PC it will be compatible with your Mac as well. Um, however it, it is it is good to format them differently but I'll show you that later on. Anyways so that's Time Machine and right now I'm gonna show you something in Finder. So right here is Finder so if you cl guys click anywhere on your desktop just click anywhere Okay, as long as it's not an icon, we're gonna go right here into Finder. So that's up here. And I want you guys just to click on preferences. Okay, and we're gonna get this. So now you guys see these icons that I have here, right? So whenever I plug in an external hard drive, USB stick, or I put in a CD, I'm gonna get these icons. And that's because I have this checked on. Okay, now let's say you guys have your hard disk on the side. Some of you may have that. That's right here. Okay, now I can make that disappear. That's my hard disk. That's my internal uh, HD in my Mac. Okay, if I double click on that, I can go into my files and so on. But some of you, and I would actually guess most of you don't want that because that just gets in the way for no reason. You guys don't really need that, so you can take that off and it's gonna disappear. So if you guys are missing any uh, USB connections that you have and you don't see them there or any CDs, you guys can just check those on or off. It's totally your option, but that's how you do it, okay? Um, the next thing that we're gonna do is a quick introduction into disk utility. So we're gonna go up here, right up here, and we're gonna click on your spotlight and we're gonna type in disk utility. Okay, so you just type in disk, you should see disk utility right away as your first option. So let's just click on there. And right here is where you guys would actually fix um, any stuff that's not 100% compatible with your Mac. So for example, if I plug in a USB stick that I'm going to plug in right now. So right now I plugged in a USB stick. Now we should see it pop up right here and there it is, it just came up. So let's say this is not 100% compatible with my Mac. That's because the format and how to format stuff on your Mac is easy. Um, right here, you guys will see Erase. So if you guys click on Erase, you guys will see various formats. So what I suggest doing is just formatting as XFAT. That's because XFAT will be compatible with any PC and Mac. Okay, so both it's going to work fine with both. This other one, MS-DOS FAT, that also works, but it's limited. So if you have a file that's bigger than four gigs by itself, it will not transfer over, okay, with MS-DOS FAT. However, the good thing about MS-DOS FAT is that a lot of DVD players and other devices are only compatible with that format. So if you want to transfer something over to your DVD player, Blu-ray, 
um, you may need to format it that way. Okay, and if you want something just to work with Mac so you don't get any viruses or anything like that, then you want the first option. Okay, now you guys can do this as well, but I would just go with the standard, okay, extended OS, and um, this will only work with Mac, and that's why you won't get any viruses in it. With these other ones, you can get viruses in it, but if they're viruses, let's say that they're for PC, you will see them on, they will transfer over to your USB stick, but they will not transfer over to your Mac. And even if they do transfer over, they will not run because you cannot run any PC programs on your Mac. So it has to be a specific virus for Mac. So uh, for example, um, files that are for PC, they're .exe, and files that are for Mac are .dmg. So hopefully that makes a little bit sense to you guys. But anyways, so that's a quick tutorial just on formatting. But once you guys want to format something, so this drive, I actually needed to be MS DOS fat because of um, an, a really old computer that I'm running. I'm using this for that. So I might as well show you guys how to do this. So you guys can name it whatever you guys want. I'm gonna name it 64 gig, cause that's what the USB is. And then press erase. Now, when you're formatting or erasing, it does exactly just that. It deletes everything that's right in there. Now, never, never touch these first two options up here. So that's your Fusion Drive. You guys might not even see Fusion Drive. You guys might just see Macintosh, Macintosh HD, uh, depending. It doesn't really depend. Uh, doesn't really matter what name you see up here, but do not touch these two because those are your hard drives, uh, your internal hard drive from your Mac or your iMac. Everything else, they're external, it's right here on the title, and um, those you can format, sure. Just make sure that when you're formatting, you know that it's deleting everything, and uh, that's what it does. Um, and it's really hard to get back once you delete something this way. Anyway, so that's how you format something. As you can see, my icon's right here, and then that's the name. I can go to it. Now, I want to, when I want to copy and paste something in your Mac, um, you can just double click on this, for example, and it's gonna open up. And let's say I want to copy this video. It's the same thing if you have a, for example, a picture or anything like that or any type of file. You guys can just right click, like I showed you how to activate your right click. And right now you guys will see all these options. Okay, and we can just copy, click copy. Or you guys can press Command C. Command C will copy and then you guys can just press. So let's just do copy for now. And then let's click right here and then we're gonna right click again. And then we're gonna put in paste item. So this will paste that video. And there we go, that's it. My video is pasted. So that's how you can copy and paste on your Mac by right clicking. You can also press Command C to copy it and Command V into the folder you wanna copy it into, paste it into, and then that will paste onto it, okay? So Command V, that's V as in Victor. Um, anyways, that's it for your Mac basics. I hope I covered the really basics that you need to know once you get a Mac. Obviously, setting up your email is pretty easy. You can also do that from your system preferences. So this is a big thing. System preferences is a lot of stuff in one thing. You see uh, your users, you, you will see pretty much anything uh, that's really important will be in system preferences. So even uh, if you don't have your mail set up, you can actually set it up right here, okay? Um, so internet accounts, your iCloud, all that stuff. Uh, these are pretty basic things to do. But uh, hopefully this video helped you out. If you guys have any comments or questions, you can write them down here below in the comments area. And don't forget to subscribe and rate. Thank you.